Hi, this is Brian from Trimec, and we're going to take a look at how we can use GOM scanners to measure multiple parts at the same time with one of the larger measuring volumes. I'm going to be showing this today with the ATOS Q using the 350 MV measuring volume, but this technique could work equally well with a GOM Scan 1 with the 200 or 400 measuring volume. So we're going to be scanning relatively smaller parts where we can fit more than one on the turntable and all within the measuring volume. The nice thing about the 350 is that the light completely uh, covers up the entirety of the rotation table. So I'm here in the GOM software and I'm just going to follow along the workflow assistant and tell it that I want to scan multiple parts simultaneously. It's going to ask me to pre-measure the reference points on the turntable. Now this is an optional step when you're scanning just one part, but when you're scanning multiple parts, it, it is a requirement. So we're just doing a couple of quick looks at the, uh, the targets on the turntable from a few different angles. And that's gonna create kind of a background reference so that the system knows that those targets are not part of any of the parts that I'm using. And it's gonna automatically cut off the plane below the, uh, the measuring table. So now that I'm about to scan with the rotation table, I'm going to go ahead and place my three parts spaced out equally onto the turntable. And as you'll see momentarily, the software is going to automatically break this up into kind of pie slices. So I want to space these out radially on the turntable so that I'll have clean lines between them. I've got different uh, kinds of surface finishes on these parts. So I'm going to allow for the extra time for this to take multiple different shots with different exposure times to get all the different uh, colors and surface finishes on these three different objects. I'll also note that I have placed a couple of measuring targets around the perimeter of each part in the area that's going to be caught in both orientations so that when I flip them upside down, it'll be able to use those reference points to uh, move around the data sets in space to match up both sides to each other. So this is my first measurement. I'm going to check to see that everything is fitting nicely inside the field of view of the scanner and that the area highlighted in red is indeed what I want it to delete away. And now we're going to speed up the video and uh, skip to a, jump to a little bit later where it has taken all of the 13 measurements that I have prescribed for these three parts. It's going to do 13 different uh, rotations on the turntable. Okay, so I've taken uh, all 13 rotations on the turntable. Could have made that any number that I want. That's just the number that I chose this time. And now I'm going to continue on in the workflow assistant. I'm going to tell it that I want it to automatically partition the working area. And as you can see, it does a really nice job figuring out what I'm going to want for breaking up the turntable into sections. I'm going to accept this and close the window. And now I'm going to tell the workflow assistant that I'd like to prepare scanning a second side. I'm going to have to pick up each of these parts and place it in the opposite orientation from the first scan. Again, being sure that the, uh, the targets on each part are going to be visible. And optionally, I can ask it to help me position the parts with assistance. It shows me uh, a visual from the camera, and this is live. I can reach in and make small adjustments to see whether I'm coming in and passing through the planes that have been defined. And this can be really nice for making little adjustments like this piece I could get away with having a little bit closer to the center of the turntable, as with this guy right here. Nope, a little too far. And I can make it show just one part at a time. That looks good. And now I'm going to tell it I'm going to scan again with the rotation table. I'm not going to need to pause for the system to ask me if it's picking the right cutoff plane. It already has that defined. 
from the previous step. So let's take a look at the first couple of scans coming up. And then once these look good, I think we're going to go ahead and speed up the video again to the next step. OK, we've got all our scanning finished. And all that's left to do is to tell the workflow assistant that I want to start transforming the second side of each scan onto the first, starting with the first part. We'll zoom in here and take a look. And this looks like it's pretty accurate. So we're going to go ahead and accept it. Now we're going to tell it we want to do the second part. Once again, looking good. And we should note that we could do as many parts as we want. We could do four, six, 12 parts on the turntable if they fit. And the third. Also worth noting that even with the larger measuring volume for these relatively smaller parts, the 350MV is still getting some really nice level of detail on each of these parts, including the uh, metal bracket that has some text engraved in it. We're going to really get a look at how well we've captured all of that now when we finish scanning and polygonize the mesh on each one. All right. The software tells us that our scanning is complete. And we've got, if we take a look in our Explorer, three separate meshes that can be exported independently, that can be brought into GOM Inspect for uh, any kind of QA that we need to do. Uh, we can do all sorts of operations to these to make sure that uh, we've got what we need, or we can export them perhaps for reverse engineering or some other application. This could be a really huge time saver if I had a large number of parts, maybe a box full of parts that I need to inspect all at once. And I hope that this was helpful to you and that you'll reach out to us for more at Trimex Solutions. Thank you very much. <laughs>